Hello, folks. It's so, 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 so. <laughs> It's Jules. Thanks for joining me on another Stitch Along. Or Stitch With Me. I always say Stitch Along, but it's really Stitch With Me. Um, and today we're working on E Pluribus Unum. I can already hear the groans. Oh, man. You should have worked on X. Insert Project X or Y or Z. And I would say, I know. I could have done Ronnie Rowe. But I have not done any work on this piece in a couple of weeks and I wanted to kind of force myself to get, and the reason why was because I just hadn't gotten the thread from the mailbox. And so I was like, oh man, I really need to get working on this again. So that is what I'm doing tonight. And it is night. Uh, this is Saturday night and if the lighting looks great, it's because I got my new lighting set up here, which is like, uh, super, super easy. I may show it at the, the next little, um, no, I probably won't cause the room's a mess, but <laughs> it's just literally like these very thin pieces of white reflective fabric in an umbrella. Literally it's like a reflective umbrella, um, with some very cheap plastic stands and a very bright led light flat or uh, light bulb, um, not LED light, but just a very bright um, light bulb in both of them. So it's, uh, it serves its purpose though. So I'm super happy because now I can come up here and I can do my videos in the evenings and I will be very happy and I hope you will be very happy. And I'm sorry, I just hit that with my, I'm wearing my Stitchy Vision glasses for this today. And so, I may occasionally hit said stitchy vision glasses on this thing that's holding my camera, but my, or my phone, I should say. Anyway, so what's been going on, guys? Let's see. I've been getting a lot of stitching done. Uh, finished that old, old world map page, finally. Started on a new one. Definitely looks pretty cool because I can see the design is changing now, so I'm excited about something that looks a little different and I uh, did a lot more on a pot carry shop and gosh uh, now I'm sitting here thinking well I've done so much oh I did a bunch of rainy waterloo plays too I'm getting close to finishing um that one that page on that one too and being able to go back up and start a new section but I don't think I'll have that done before the next update because I, I am, uh, I've already done so much on it. And I mean, I, when I say so much, I mean, I've probably done 400 stitches maybe. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. If I get the bug and I want to stitch it, then I'll just stitch it. I got an itch. Speaking of bugs, I got an itch. But oh, we're going to get a visit from my husband. Or not. Probably remembered I was recording. <laughs> but uh, he was coming. He was coming. But now he's not. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I got that stuff done. And now I'm working on this. And then I'll work on some Ronnie Rowe. Um, and then I absolutely need to pull something else out. And I've been, been thinking and talking about it. And my husband suggested I needed to get, I need to get started on that Boba Fett piece. And I agree, because the Boba Fett piece is absolutely gorgeous. So I do want to get going on that one. That would be cool. And, uh, so yeah, so it's good there. It's good there. Oh, I'm not even looking to see if you guys can see what I'm doing. How rude of me. Okay. What's this next part? Oh, goodness. So what did we do so far today? Well, we went and checked on the bees today. We had to change out the battery for the electric fence that surrounds our hives. So I hadn't seen him in months. I hadn't seen him since the day that we uh, harvested the bees. So my husband had been going down there and checking on him, making sure everything looks good. But I went down with him today because I had the day off. And we were like, all right, let's, let's go do this together. And it was fun. And it was cool. And we got to talk to the guy that runs the ranch down there. Hold on, I lost my, I lost my floss. I gotta reassemble the floss. Um, all right, all right, all right. Um, so it was good to to see him and uh, just get kind of a 
um, give him an update on what we were doing and everything. So, but we couldn't quite tell. There were a few bees coming in and out of one of the hives. Um, so we know one of them's alive, but it was just too cold today. I mean, it, it didn't feel that bad. It was probably like about 45, but it's, that's too cold to open up a hive and expose them to that cold, that cold air. And so we just kind of just took a look at them. It was a, it was a brief visit and then came back home. So that worked out pretty well. And then I just been stitching and then I took a nap and then I started stitching and and then my husband put in a Papa Murphy's one of those take and bake pizzas you can you buy it and then you come home and you bake it yourself and because uh, we really really like it and had a little accident uh, sorry sorry honey I'm gonna rat you out here but <laughs> he uh, put it on the bottom rack instead of the top rack which is the first time he's ever ever done anything like that because he's the he's the chef in our house I mean honestly uh, and so uh, when the timer went off and I was stitching and he was on the computer and he was right in the middle of something so he asked if I could run up there and pull the pizza out of the oven and I ran up into the kitchen let's shut the timer off and there was smoke pouring out of um, the burners of the stove <laughs> and I was like well I've never seen that before and uh, so then when I opened up the um, uh, whatchamacallit when I opened up the uh, hold on a second I gotta sit two ah one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, there we go. I should have worn, this is a little hard to do, but anyway, so um, pizza. Um, so then uh, I had to, uh, and we had to open up all the windows and turn on the fans and the, then the smoke detector went off, or as I like to affectionately call it, the oven timer, and, um, and get all that uh, taken care of. and. And uh, it still smells like smoke up here. <laughs> and so no big deal. But um, And you know what? Honestly, the part of the pizza was still edible, which was awesome because we do like our pizza. And so we went ahead and still ate part of it, and it was good. So we at least got dinner out of it, even though we didn't get any leftovers. But that's okay. That is okay. So I'm going to go up and do a couple little motifs like this and this. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to finish this part. Hello, Jules. Finish that stitch, you crazy. So, anyway. All right, now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do this part. One, two, so. Ah. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, there's that one. You guys are going to get an up close and personal look at this today because I really need to get an up close and personal look at it myself. I need to put on stronger magnifiers. Oh my gosh, my eyes are going. Oh no. But anyway, so. And then. Jelly, the rescue dog, got all freaked out because the alarm was going off and then the the timer was going off and then we had to turn the fan on, the the oven fan. Oh, I just messed that up, didn't I, guys? All right, I'm going to... That's not coming out. That's not coming out. Well, let me try. Bink, bink, bink. Nope, that's not coming out. I don't... It came out. That was amazing. Did you guys see... You guys saw that, right? I mean, I wouldn't have known... I wouldn't have, like... Oh my gosh, that actually just happened. Magic. But, uh, <laughs> well, all right then. Um, oh, anyway, Jelly. So she, uh, she's been really nervous with all the crazy noises and stuff tonight. So she's been jumping into my lap in my stitchy chair, which made me go, oh, you know what? I'm going to go upstairs and do my video because I can't stitch down here because she keeps jumping into my lap. And as much as I love her and want to help her out, there's a limit. And that limit is when I need to get my stitching done. And I've already had her in my lap for half an hour. So, oh, I'm going to stretch my legs out. Oh, got to move the box. Anyway, so, but she's, 
she's uh, gotten, well, she's, let's say she's made it to the next phase of, of living in a home with us and she's gone from, I mean, she's been with us for a year now and she went from shaking 24 hours a day and, and being completely insecure. And now, you know, even when she is upset, she just comes to me and I talk to her a little bit and she wags her tail and she's fine. And, uh, so she's, you know, and she, and now, I mean, she went from like running away when you tried to pet her to, it took like, I think three months for me to convince her that it was okay for me to hug her. And then, no, I, actually that might've just been three months ago. She's made a lot of progress lately. And then, um, she, uh, Hmm. Hold on a second. Mm. Am I going to be able to get that in? Probably not. Let's just stop this right here. So you stop that right here. But anyway, so but the problem is now that she knows she can get up into the lazy boy with me, that's what she loves to do. And the problem is, is that the next phase is I have to get her to be good with, um, laying down by herself. Um, so like just laying down like in all, all my legs or something so I can still stitch. Everybody, I've gotten everybody else trained for that, but she now needs that, that bit of coaxing. So we'll, we'll see how that works. That'll be our next thing. My husband says, you know, for somebody who is, you know, pretty strong and confident, you sure have a bunch of incredibly needy dogs. And that is exactly true. <laughs> I have mm, maybe three of them are like ridiculously needy, but I figure those are just our special ones, our special ones. Ah, <sighs> what to do, what to do, guys. What should we do? Should we do this part? We do this part? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We're getting down to almost having the uh, E Pluribus part on here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and come down a wee tad more. All right, so pardon me while I count, if I can count. One, two, three, four. Oops. I'm using a bigger needle than you guys probably would. I'm sure you would use a much smaller needle, but I like this needle for the ease of threading. Um, when I'm using two threads at a time, it is just way easier um, to use a slightly larger needle with a bigger eye. All right, now that I've done that, one, two, three, four, and then right, ah. One, two, three, four. Great. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. By the way, oh man, I'm going to forget the name of it, but there's a new movie that's coming out and it is about the life of, was it? I'm going to butcher his poor name. Um, Andre Bocelli, uh, which I'm not a, like, um, opera fan or anything like that but that man has a beautiful voice um and it's about his life and um his career and his life and just you know how he got to where he did and it looks really good um i don't remember the title of it it's something like the silence or i don't remember exactly what it was but anyway we were watching some movie trailers the other night and that popped up and it's like oh that looks pretty good this might be where using a smaller needle may come in handy. I'm starting to notice a little bit. I gotta be careful about how hard I yank on these threads. Oh, let's actually put this where you guys can see it, eh? Eh? Otherwise it's not much of a stitch with me. You guys working on whatever project you're supposed to be working on? Are ya? Are ya? I hope so. Uh-oh. Oh, no, that's good. Whew, scared me for a second there. Do, 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 do. Don't even ask me why Spectre Gadget theme song has popped in my head. You know, I never watched that. <sighs> Another thing I don't know if I'm going to watch, the Super Bowl. Just not sure. Just not sure. I, um, I'm not a Patriots fan. Kind of tired. Like I said, I have a buddy of mine, a friend of mine, who has his football team is Alabama. And they beat my team for the national championship. His um, 
he has a lot of close friends that are from Alabama. So he, when he when he met them and uh, grew up with them, he just kind of became a Bama fan because of that. So it's not like he's a um, hanger on or whatever bandwagoner. And then um, he uh, his football team is the Patriots because he's from Maine. They always have been. And then his uh, hockey team, which is probably his number one team, is the Boston Bruins. Now, the Patriots are in the Super Bowl. The Bruins are having a great year and may have a chance to go very far in the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. And he's, he's, the, kind of, he's the kind of guy that basically like sometimes lives and dies a little too much with his teams. And he will you know, in the course of a season, you know, bemoan his fate or whatever, you know, it's just, I mean, he's a great guy, but you know, he's like, Oh, oh man, my life is terrible. My teams are terrible. You know, just that kind of thing. And I'm like, dude, I'm a bears fan that also is Georgia grad and we haven't won a title in 30 plus years in either sport. And, uh, and my hockey team is the blues and we've never won. So I told him a little, I told him a little while ago that I said, if the Bruins go far in the playoffs, I don't want to hear another complaint about your sports teams for the indefinite future because his sports mania is he's, it's an embarrassment of riches. is what I said. So, <sighs> anyway. It's just sports. It's just, it's not like it's cross-stitching people. It's not like it's life and death like cross-stitching is. Cross-stitching is life and death. It can be if you do, let me see that. Yeah, it's healing where I kind of pierced my finger with my needle. It's healing, it's fine. But anyway, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to watch. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. I'm going to watch. I'm going to miss all the pregame. I wouldn't mind watching halftime because I like uh, Justin Timberlake. But um, outside of that, I'm just like, yeah. I think there's hockey tomorrow. I think it all ends before the Super Bowl, but I think there's hockey tomorrow. So I was watching the games tonight, and then we had the great smoke, the great smoke out. Um, and then the dogs went nuts, and then it was just, and then I was like, yeah, I, I've got stuff recording. Oh, I could just watch that tomorrow. Because I don't think that Jelly is going to let me stitch in my chair for the rest of the night. We shall see. I might just stay up here and work on this project for a while. Man, I'm telling you guys, I'm like having a hard time seeing the holes even with the magnifiers I'm wearing. So when I do, when I cut this, um, when I go to like a part two and I, and I, and I, go to another video. I'm going to go get my magnifiers and see if I can find something that's a little stronger because I seem to need it. Speaking of things to watch, we bought our tickets for Black Panther. Incredibly excited about that. Looks awesome. And we're excited for Thor to come out on DVD. And that would be great. Outside of that, oh, I found uh, yet another hobby that I have um, is I'm a coin collector and I've uh, collected coins for several years now. My grandfather, my grand, my mother was a collector, my grandfather was a collector before her and you know, whatever, <laughs> but, um, but no, it was, um, you know, he collected a lot of, uh, a lot of coins, a lot of bicentennial quarters and half dollars, different years and whatnot. And so, you know, one year my mom was out visiting me many, many years ago, like it's at least a decade. It might be like 13 years ago or something like that. And she um, uh, had, you know, we went to this, this mall, outdoor mall here, and there was a bookstore. So, you know, this was a while ago, right? Cause there was a bookstore. And so, um, went in and just taking a look around, came upon the coin collecting books. And I was like, 
oh, this would be really, really cool. And so what I have done basically is I have, over the years, I've gotten all the books for like just the the circulation coins. So the pennies, the nickels, the dimes, quarters. Um, and I did get the presidential dollar ones because I actually get those. I've gotten those as change before when I, um, for the, um, the light rail here in Denver, uh, before they actually finally installed card machines, they would make you pay for everything in cash and then they give you change as um, uh, dollar coins. So it was the only time I ever got them, but it was pretty cool. And uh, so, so that was neat. And uh, but anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just looking to see what I need to stitch next here. Oof. Okay, here we go. And so, uh, so we got all those. And so what I started doing was it was just whatever I would find in circulation. So over the years, I just collect my coins, and then periodically I put them into the um, into the books and whatnot. I'm not trying to make everything perfect. I'm just trying to collect each one. It's just, you know, yet another hobby, you know, it doesn't take any time, that kind of thing. And so, um, I haven't done it for quite a while. Like I've got a lot of, I got a backlog of coins I got to go through and I don't use much cash anymore. So I don't get coins on a regular basis. So things just kind of been sitting around, but I need to go through and update my, uh, my books and the list that I need. I keep a list on my, my, my phone has an app that, keeps a list of the coins that I need, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so anyway, so we, uh, I'm sorry if I'm not always right in the front of you guys. I hope that's not a problem for you. I'm trying to remember to, to be in the front here, but anyway, so I found some YouTubers that, um, coin collectors and these guys were basically getting like rolls of nickels and rolls of dimes and going through them and looking for like these old coins that they um, that they were trying to get. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, I haven't thought about that in forever. Like trying just to try to get coins. And honestly, I never thought about like, just say going to the bank and saying, I would like to purchase a roll of quarters or I'd like to purchase a roll of dimes and seeing if you can get lucky with um, what comes. And these guys were, these guys were getting like, they, whoop, they got like nickels, they were getting like a buffalo nickel. And, um, and you're talking like, maybe 10 rolls of dimes and maybe they got like five really good dimes out of that. And, uh, cause you know, they had everything else. Okay. What am I doing? What am I doing guys? What am I doing? Where's the other piece of floss? Unorganized. I had to take my stitchy vision glasses off for a second. Cause I still have my ort protection, but it's not, it's not helping me out. It's like, I need to, whoops, I need to build up my uh, nose tolerance for the, uh, for the stuff. Man, I had a whole, uh, this, that's not it. We shoot. All right, well, I'll just talk to you guys while I'm doing this part. Oh, there it is. So, um, what was I going to say? Oh, if you want to know what thread I'm using for this, it is Simply Shaker. Color fast, gentle R threads, uniform blue, 7055. So that's what I'm using for this. You could use this particular pattern. I mean, you can use any color you want. You can use, you know, I kind of went really close to what the uh, suggestions, the uh, pattern maker suggestions was, were, was, were, suggestions were. And um, so, ah, come on, come on, Jules. You can do it. There we go. But I don't know. Anyway, so the coin guys, and it turns out there's like a bunch of video, you know, a bunch of different people out there. And there's this one guy that does like, he takes his, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, metal detectors and goes out and looks for stuff. And I was watching a video and he had, um, he was, I don't know, he was like in this farm. It must be somewhere in the Midwest, but he was out like in this rural area and he was looking back and forth and back and forth and he found something. So he took out this little spade and he kind of cut this and he had like a GoPro or something on his helmet so you could, or his head, his head so you could actually see what he was doing. And so he cut out this square area of soil and then just started digging down. He was like, well, it looks like it's about, you know, eight inches down. So he goes eight inches down and he, and right at about, 
right about seven, eight inches, it was this big, huge root that kind of came across and then sort of branched down like this. And then in the middle of all that with the caked mud and everything that was in there, there was a quarter that was like wedged like right here, like between the two roots. And it was like on its end and it was just like straight down. And, um, and so it was an incredible find and it was an incredible like video moment for him to capture that. And so he finally got it out and it was like a 1932, well, I say quarter, but I think it was a dime. And um, it was worth like a $1.50 or whatever, but a great story. I'd keep that sucker and uh, just keep it for the story purposes. So, okay, I'm going to go get a better magnifier so that I can actually see a little bit better what I'm doing. And I'm going to be back in just a second. All right, so I actually thought that I would take the opportunity to show you guys once again, um, you know, this inexpensive pair of um, magnifiers. Uh, it's a Yokto Sun. I'll put the link in the description below um, as far as I got it off of Amazon. Um, I want to say it's like $15, maybe a little bit less. Uh, it has a, has a little LED light on it, which helps. And literally it comes with this tiny little plug that you... Um, where is it at? I think it's, I've done it once, so I don't remember. I've done it once the whole time I've had this thing and this goes, these lights go up and down. So, you know, it's really cool, but I think it's behind here. I think you pop this down and then there's the plugs in there, but, um, I've only ever charged this once. That's how long these, this, this little thing lasts. And it comes with, you know, this this little setup of all these different uh, magnifiers and it goes from like a one times magnification up to a four. So I had the one time magnification on it. Um, don't ask me why. You can see the difference between like what I was using and then what I'm about to put on. Massive difference. So, and then literally just to, I mean, it just, you just pop them here. Let me make sure I do this right. You just pop them on and that's all. Take it off. Just pop it off, pop it back on, just cleaning off the smidge. It's got my little greasy fingerprints all over it. Hopefully I don't have greasy fingerprints because I'm doing my cross stitch. But anyway, so, and that, that is a lot heavier than the old one was. So this is going to even be more of a indentation on my poor little nose, but oh well. We suffer for our art. But anyway, so... The coin guys were very interesting and they they do these like live shows where they get their rolls of coins and then they they uh they do you know they, they open them live so you can actually see if they get anything cool and i know that you guys are probably like that seems crazy but then again you're watching me stitch here so you know it's there's something for everybody out there and if you enjoy coins that's it's actually pretty cool and these guys are just cool dudes you know they're just you know buddies they look like they could be related to be perfectly honest with you whoa now can you still see that holy mother okay that is not that is way too magnified <laughs> uh, that's me basically uh like with my nose on top of my my stuff there so let's let's not get quite so crazy here let's go somewhere in between let's try that what is this the two times Two and a half times, hmm. maybe just the two time. One time, two times. Let's just double up the, this, this might be all I need. I, I actually could use that four times for when I do my coins because sometimes to see the little strike of which uh, mint it's made from, you need something that small. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, that works. What I do with my needle. All right, here we go. So, so I get, I'm really close, <laughs> yet again, to figuring out what new projects I'm going to start. I know I say that all the time. Trust me, my, my husband listens to that all the time. I'm getting ready to start it. i ready to start it. Let me tighten this up a little bit. I'm just going to pull that through. No problem. I'm going to tighten it down. I was also watching somebody fly fish, which I've done that a few times. I used to fly fish. Um, 
many, many years ago when I first moved to Colorado, I was like, I want to do a Colorado hobby. So I chose fly fishing instead of skiing because skiing seemed a lot more expensive and time consuming. And I was very glad that I didn't ski just because I'm accident prone and, and injury prone. So I didn't want to do that. All right, hold on. Stand by. Standing by. But anyway, so um, fly. Oh, let me just okay. Let me just jump back through a couple different stories here. But so fly fishing, I I did that for I, I took a class. I had a guided you know tour. He taught me how to do it. Bought my stuff. You know, a very basic uh, fishing rod and uh, you know all the just the basic gear and everything. And it was so cool. And I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed going to this place called. 11 Mile Canyon, which is just west of Colorado Springs up in the mountains. And it, it just, I just really, really enjoyed that area. It was very peaceful and, and very secluded in a lot of ways. And the canyon, the canyon, the canyon protected you from a lot of like really severe winds and things, which can be really bad in that area. But, um, so, um, and I, and I fished, I would fish like once or twice a week. I, it, it was very therapeutic for me to go up there and relax and, but it would take the better part of a day. And, uh, so it was, I mean, I actually was cross stitching back then. So I wasn't getting a lot of cross stitching done during that time. And I was like, man, the problem is cause it's like a, at least a two hour drive to go fish anywhere from where I live in Colorado. It's just, uh, it's just a fact because the best fly fishing is going to be in the mountains and it's a couple of hours anywhere to get to do some decent fishing. So, um, so that was the downside of that. I'm going to go up here and do this real quick. There we go. I'm doing this little motif, little section up here because it's going to help me tell where I need to stop the top part of this E. Because this, this right here is the top part of the E for E pluribus unum out of many one. Um, so, okay. Oh, so I fished for a long time. I'm making, no, that's just how it looks. Um, so I did that and then I, I had one, one day where I had a bit of an awakening. It was actually the best day of fishing I ever had. And I had found this little, deep pool that was right before a bit of a fall and I could fish it very comfortably like from three feet away on the bank and it was just everything was set up to be like ridiculously easy for me and because of that I was enormously successful with what they call nymph fishing which is not quite the traditional fly fishing that everybody thinks of where you're 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 casting a fly on the end of your line and you're dancing it across the top of the, or you're setting it on top of the water or you're dancing it on top of the water and the fly and the fish think it's an actual fly and they jump up and they grab it and you've got them. Um, this is nymph fishing. And so what it is, is that it's a, um, it's a, a juvenile form of a fly. So it's a, it's a tiny little dark thing, almost honestly, almost like one of, you know, one of these stitches and you put a weight on it or weight on your line so that it pulls it down in the water. And it looks like a very, juvenile form of a fly, which is for some fish, that's what they prefer if they, if they stay on the, towards the bottom of the water. And so I had found a place where I'm like, there's fish in this spot. And I started fishing it and I just, I was pulling fish after fish after fish out and it's a catch and release, right? So, and I was just like, I was just euphoric. I'd never had such a day fishing in my entire life. And I was like, this is amazing. And then I started, and because I was catching so many, I was beginning to do weird things like I was somehow, I would catch them because my, um, my hook and whatnot would go down and they must have been so dense down there that I actually started grabbing fish accidentally. It was never by my tent, like on their sides or like not, like I wasn't catching the fish. I was like just trolling for them or trawling or whatever they call that for them. And it wasn't real fishing. And I was like pulling them out and, and I was like tearing their sides. And, and then like, if I had one time where I had a really hard time getting the hook out of the one's mouth, cause it was really deep. And, and I started feeling really bad and I'm just like, what am I doing? And 
I had like a, like a moment of clarity, I suppose. And I'm just like, I understand why people fish. And I know that in a sense that fish, you know, they are a lower life form and they are, you know, in a sense, food and blah, blah, blah. But that being said, it's my choice on whether or not I choose to, you know, pull them out of their safe little environment when all they're trying to do is eat and potentially stress them to the point of them dying. And I, you know, I just felt terrible and I just like, you know what? I just, I felt so guilty about it that that was the absolute last time that I went fishing. I never went fishing again. And, um, I don't know if I would ever do it again. Even like I said, even though it's catch, and, I almost feel like it's worse because it's catch and release. I feel like if it were more, um, hold on, if it were more, uh, what's the word? Um, sorry, I'm also looking at my pattern at the same time. If it was more for me to eat, like it's like okay, we're gonna we're going camping, let's go fishing, catch our dinner catch a couple fish. That to me is reasonable. Uh, to me, I'm like, okay, I caught them for a purpose, caught them, killed them, ate them in a story. I could totally do that. That's, I would do that without any guilt. Um, but you know, playing with them the way that we play with them, catch and release, not a fan, just not a fan. And, um, I really wish that I wasn't like that because I'll be honest with you, I did enjoy the fishing and it was a very relaxing hobby, but knowing what I know now, I just can't in all good conscience do that. Conscience do that. And uh, I, um, yeah, so don't like torture in any form. Anyway, happy doodles, happy doodles. We're getting this, we're grinding away on this E. I'm going to finish this E with you guys watching me. Well, I hope you're not watching me. I hope you're actually stitching on your own stuff. That would be, that would be most efficient. But let's go back to the cross stitching plans, okay? So, trying to figure out, like, I know I did that big end of year. I should really watch that end of year, my whip parade or whatever you want to call it, um, to like remind myself what I have. And I know I have all these different, you know, ideas and I've had all these different ideas. I just, my, I lack follow through on a lot of stuff and what is my husband listening to? It's crazy. Can I do that same crazy trick with the, hmm, got a little, little naughty knot. Snaggy snag, naughty knot. No, I think that, I don't think that'll matter. I think I can still work with that. Um, but, oh yeah, that's fine. <sighs> so, what was I talking about? As I say that, for the, oh, so anyway, so, um, so what am I, you know, what to do, what to do? Uh, I do agree that the um, Boba Fett piece should be next. Um, or I should be, it should be part of what I do next. Um, my husband's actually like, I would rather you do that one instead of the Stormtrooper one. And I can understand why, because I think it's just, it's pretty. I still want to do the Stormtrooper one, and I still will work on it. But, so I want to put a list. All right. So I'm going to have you guys hold me to this. Before my next video, so before, say, Wednesday night or whatever, I need to come up with maybe... A little like the fabric that I want for Boba Fett and I think I'm gonna get the um, you know those uh, patterns that I have that like the dachshund pattern and the um, uh, the the skeleton married pattern or whatever I I'm kind of disappointed in the Ada that came with that, with the fabric. And the reason why I say that is because it's just, it's a real flimsy kind of Ada. And I really, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so if I don't like the way the fabric feels, I'm going to be less than happy with working on a project. And you, you, we all know how that is. So I want to get new dachshund fabric and Boba Fett fabric 
And then should I look into space traveler fabric? The Doctor Who thing? You guys are just crazy. What you make me do, what you hold me down and make me do is just unconscionable. <laughs> um, but uh, I need to pull that out, take a look at what I would want to do with that. We'll see. We shall see. But, um, so yeah, I'm crazy. What else is going on? Not a lot. Oh, so excited for the Olympics to start. Super excited. And that's about it. I'm not done yet, guys. I'm just, I'm just saying that's about it in terms of, look, the E. Oh, wait, I, wait, I'm missing one thing. Let me come down here. That's why this doesn't look quite right. Got to put the little end point here. And there we go. So there's the E. Does that look right? Yeah, it looks right. It's just a funky E, isn't it? So, and there we go. And there we go, people. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So I'm making progress. I like it. So I'm actually going to loosen this up. Move this down a little bit. I mean, this is ridiculous. This fabric, I'm going to have so much leftover fabric. It's like here, and then I think it's going to end at about here. And then look, I could do this twice over. I'm not sure what I was thinking. It's just the Julie way of doing things, and I suppose. But I never get enough floss. I always get too much fabric. Well, I don't get too much. Actually, I get, oh, I always get what I ask for. A stitching shop always does it just right. It's just I never start in the right spot. So there's your answer. Hold on, I got to tighten this up. Loops and threads. There's my thread for this. There we go. That's pretty. You can see kind of the it's got a bend. That's that's too much bend for me. I gotta tighten it up a wee tad more. Let's go around. Pull it through. If somebody asked me about do I worry about damaging the floss or the fabric with pulling it through, and as you can see, I really don't. Because I gotta tell you, if it's not strong enough to handle me pulling it through a hoop, it's not gonna make it very long in my house. So, did I do that right? Ah, oh, I did that right. Hooray! Okay, wait, let me highlight real quick what I've done. So that I don't forget to do that. Hot diggity dog. Alrighty, dighty. Sure. It's a good day. It's a good day to stitch. It'd be a better day if it was snowing, but you know, can't have everything, I suppose. I want it. I can't have it. Alright. Let me just tuck this up. It's the one downside of having so many projects that I'm like on the left side of. I've got all this fabric over here. And I know I could like, you know, roll it up, use a thing, blah, blah, blah. And, but do I do it? No, because that would just be one more thing for me to lose. And I already have so many of those to begin with. And I mean, and that's the truth. I, I There's all kinds of other things that I could, you know, do. Um, other things that I could use in my stitching. But honestly, I'm like, I would, I would break it or lose it. Or it would just cause me to have a bigger mess than I already do. So I'm somewhat of a, I call myself a minimalist when it comes to this stuff. Just because I'm, I mean, what you see is what I have. I mean, it's, uh, I don't, you know, I, 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 a stitching stand sounds awesome, but my dogs would probably break it or chew it. They're just, you know. That's just what's going to happen. Uh, I got the little magnifiers. 
Is there something wrong there? No, it's got a little piece of fuzz right there. Let's tease that out, or is that just within the thread itself? It might be just within the thread. Oh, or maybe it's the back. No, no. <sighs> All right, I'm just gonna choose to ignore it. But um, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I saying? But you know, I have needles, hoops, fabric, floss, little scissors. Oh, by the way, thankfully my trusty purple pair. Uh, I'm I'm keeping this one, but I've got like th probably three other little pairs like this. I don't know where they are. Who knows where they are? And so I lose things all the time. I have a little Bermuda Triangle of all kinds of things in my house, not just fish. But anyway, so. Uh, you know, needles, floss, thread, um, my fabric, um, that's about it. Oh, my project bags. Yeah, my project bags. Gotta have those, because otherwise, phew, gee whiz, messy, messy. Boop, boop, ba -doo, boop, ba -doo. You know what, I could use the fabric that I got from Gecko Rouge is to do some of those smaller uh, Star Wars pieces. Cause, I, although I could surge the ends, despite the fact that I still haven't quite got the serger to work. Guys, I just have so much to do. It's ridiculous, but um, I, uh, despite that, I don't even remember what I was saying. Serger. Oh, um, I could literally just tape the ends of those things. Um, I, I, you know, you can, you can tape them and I'll just tape those and, and do some of those smaller little projects. They'd be adorable. Make them into tiny little, uh, tiny little things to hang on the wall, maybe behind me when I do my videos and the blue things. I'm gonna eventually do um, another tour of my stitchy wall when all the new stuff gets up. And I think my husband's gonna put it, that up tomorrow. So at some point I'll do a new a new tour because I got a lot of new subscribers. Hey guys. And so um, because of that, I was thinking maybe another tour of the stitchy wall at some point would be indicated. Just so y'all can see what I do. Get the light up. Here we go. Okay. This, and then this is going to be the O of out of many. So, and then this will be the last part on the left border. And that and dirt and dirt and away we go. But hmm. So what I have to do is send an email to a stitching shop with two, maybe three things of fabric that I'll need and pick it up in a week or two or so, or whenever I can get over there and try my hardest to not look at anything new while I'm there because I've got too much. I really want to get back. The other thing I need to do is, and I have it downstairs, is I need to get back into that when dogs drool. No. Yeah, 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 the, dog, the dogs drool one. Um, I need to get Sorry guys, um, that one done. So I got to work on it. But we're almost done. Well, with a stitcher, stitch with me. So I'm pretty much, we'll probably just wrap it up here cause I'm almost done with this floss right here, so. 
But you guys have a great week. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you soon with my next video. And just keep stitching. I hope you got some good progress done on your projects while you were watching me. That would be awesome. I will see you guys.